Hi, everybody, and welcome to our next talk, My DIY Pinball on TBM with Philip Cova. Please enjoy it. Hello, Mini DevConf Online Watchers. This is Philip Koval, and today I will share some experiments about uh, how I built uh, a pinball as a hobby. So let me introduce myself. So I'm a software engineer based in France. I've been an open source contributor for a couple of decades now and currently involved into Mozilla Rep program. I've been previously involved into a different business uh, that use open source like uh, Tizen operating system for Intel. Then I act on uh, Yocto with Yocto on automotive projects and my main contribution when I joined Samsung was uh, IoTVT framework. You can contact me at pearl.org slash rzr. I'm currently material for hire. You can uh, also check what I'm doing. I shared a lot on the Fediverse or Twitter. It's about uh, open source uh, hardware, embedded Linux, and uh, some experiment uh, melting, melting IoT and uh, 3D worlds. But uh, let's talk about uh, Emilia Pinball. I should get credit to Eric Engvist that wrote this game in year 2000. It's a plain uh, regular Linux game. It's using OpenGL for rendering and a SDL, simple direct layer library for OS abstraction. He also wrote an editor using Qt framework for creating new tables. Everything has been published to SourceForge. And a couple of years later, I contributed a couple of patches to port to new platform, load 3D asset, I tried to roll my own table, and uh, then progressively by my own maintenance of the project. Meanwhile, uh, Debian Packagers uh, made a package for this uh, game, so thanks a lot. And uh, recently it was often, but it's not a problem because I will probably adopt it and uh, update it uh, through the Debian game team. And I've been already uh, packaging new tables, so you can try them. Uh, let now let's talk about uh, the contributi the community contribution. So there were some patches from communities, that's pretty cool, and even some extra tables. But for legal reason, I didn't want to taint the main project with uh, different assets with different license. It can be a nightmare to maintain and it can cause some scalability issue because asset size can be a little big so I didn't want to uh, mix uh, data and source too much. So I suggested uh, authors to create their own project and try to uh, make it uh, as an external plugin for Emilia because it's already designed to do this way but I believe that auto tools or auto fools should I say blocked the creators to maintain their own table so they, they integrated their own tab in, into their own forks of the project and there was different uh, projects ongoing. So that's a problem I decided to solve recently because I did it my my own and I isolated the code. I mean, now I'm maintaining a separate package for each tables. Let me show you a short demonstration about the, the new table which is uh, in Debian uh, testing. So if you load the table you can play this uh, game, so you can see uh, it uh, like a regular pinball with some lot of effects like a nudge. It has some magnets where it can uh, trigger the balls and so on. Um, but it doesn't stop here because I wanted to port on some uh, single ball pop computer like this one from ST on, and I've been using Yocto this time. So why how did I, I had a look at this? Because I wanted to check about how can legacy software can run on modern uh, systems. So here we are talking about uh, desktop OpenGL. How can it be deployed to current software stack? Because there is a lot of improvements lately on Mize 3D, X11 now switching to Wayland. We have also the kernel mode settings to get rid of the graphic stuff and uh, we have also the API for 3D which is evolving so from OpenGL uh, 1 I try to use uh, an OpenGL ES uh, wrapper to provide the GLOS uh, implementation but probably the future should go now to Vulkan API 
so to do this I needed to uh, get access to the board support package from different uh, vendors so I ported to Yorkto open the and uh, made the packaging for this uh, new uh, custom uh, operating system which is uh, quite interesting also and then I benchmarked my board I have home so I tried on the STM32 MP1 I, uh, I have this one which is uh, supported by Yocto also there is also the Dragon board which is ARM V8 and the Raspberry Pi and uh, what I really want to uh, check is about the support about uh, current uh, free driver we have on the uh, ARM uh, GPU and uh, I wrote my own custom profiler to have some metrics uh, you can um, decide to deploy to new system but I wanted to compare to something I can uh, uh, check easily without rebuilding everything so I get uh, back to Debian for uh, having a, a stable reference system so anyway here's a short demonstration about uh, uh, early uh, results so this is uh, running on the STM32 um, MP1 so I think here is to see I was using a software rendering and it's not uh, displayed in full screen but the performance is uh, enough to be playable but uh, it can be accelerated that's uh, what I wanted to explore in the future so something uh, not really related but uh, I wanted also to make uh, a pin cab so it's a uh, pinball simulator in a cabinet uh, that's something uh, I, I've been uh, doing during the 2020 lockdown because I wanted to get busy and uh, I created something uh, which is very low cost so you can should um, you can you can replicate this without uh, investing too much money so it cost me virtually almost nothing because I reuse uh, existing uh, um stuff i say um, some made some savage of existing equipment so i found a digital signature screen uh, which is quite heavy and i put it on two threshold and uh, then you can level it up to uh, one meter and it fits like a real pinball uh, for the soft the hardware i use a uh, a very old PC which is running on the Pentium 32 bits that's pretty old and then I needed to create uh, add some new buttons so first I had a keyboard then I stripped uh, some mouse uh, each side of the of the display and it fit my needs I wanted something easy to uh, dismantle and to move in different location anyway I tried it on a future pinball first so it's a Windows game and uh, it's quite old now, but you can install it on Linux using Lotris. There is a demo table. Uh, it's running Wine uh, emulator for the loading uh, DirectX API. Uh, it's not free, so I wanted something free like and lib or like uh, Emilia Pinball. So I want to port uh, Emilia to this new uh, setup. So how to do a pin cab from uh, using Emilia? So first you need to support uh, a different uh, display like in portrait mode with a camera which is in static view and displaying almost all the table. And I then I wrote uh, some script to boot directly to a random table and uh, it's using uh, X11. I also try to uh, run on Wayland and do some systemd uh, startup script and uh, I wanted uh, something easy to boot and to turn it off uh, so I'm using a read only file system on a USB uh, key I also need to handle uh, new inputs uh, type and eventually in the future new outputs so currently I just uh, need some buttons to control flippers so using the mouse I can have two buttons so if there is two, two mouse I can have four buttons but only two are used because they are the same so for flippers I can use a right and left button and the plunger I can use a middle button I can try to emulate a nudge effects by combination of buttons also so here is the demonstration of the setup running so it's running on this uh, old PC and uh, here is running the same GNU table 
and uh, even the cat uh, is staring at the ball so I believe it's realistic enough I have two display on this uh, setup but uh, only one is uh, animated currently and uh, you can notice some nudge effects also so now I wanted to support um, new inputs so nudge control is not very intuitive, even if it's a combination of mouse, uh, my friend that tried it didn't really manage, so they were tilting the, the, the pinball, so I wanted to make something more natural. So I'm relying now on a motion sensor, it's uh, more easy, but uh, I had to uh, develop something new. So I use uh, another board, which is uh, NXP Freedom K64F, I got this uh, from Natex uh, conference. And uh, it's shipping an accelerometer. I wrote a driver for it, running on Nutex, and uh, currently I'm using a proof of concept using Embed OS, so using uh, uh, HEID uh, classes for the USB keyboard and so on. But this can be ported to other hardware or other operating systems. There are many, like Zephyr, Riot, FreeRT OS, Tizen RT, and so on. So it's a demonstration of my nudge. Uh, so let's see this in action. So here is what I have now. This is uh, my pin cap profile, and I can control uh, it using just two button from the mouse. And I can also tap on my uh, table on the right, and it will uh, produce a nudge effect. So that's pretty cool. And everything is running on Debian, of course. So first, originally the software was uh, supporting only keyboard events. So I tried to produce the same events using a mouse button. So it has three, three button on the mouse. Here I have two mouse uh, stripped to the edge of my display, and with a middle button I can plunge uh, uh, the ball and control each flipper on each button. And I can also emulate a nudge by pressing combination of buttons. Then I use this sensor using this NXP board. And if I'm moving my uh, table, it will produce uh, a nudge event. So it's using, it's uh, like a keyboard. And if I'm tapping on it, it uh, will trigger this uh, uh, nudge effect. So it's currently supporting NUT uh, embed. They can uh, now import it to NUTX and uh, I need probably some help. And it just works this way, just play and tap and it will move accordingly. Now, what's going on for the future? So I wrote my scripts. I want to release this in a final SDL version, then port it to uh, Open Embedded and Bitbake, uh, and then publish uh, SDL2 version and publish it uh, on different distro and to want to deploy this to different uh, single board computers. Uh, some new, some helps or new ideas are welcome. So something that can be valuable is to pick a community patch from a lot of uh, ongoing forks. I didn't have a look, but some, most of them are on GitHub. Uh, experiment uh, some new 3D uh, technology like uh, uh, OpenGL ES for embedded, the Vulkan API, or eventually play on a VR. That can be also interesting. Uh, I want also to support uh, many distributions. Um, Debian is fine, but it can be a little slow, so maybe it can be interesting to have snapshot package that anybody can try. Uh, maybe it could make sense also to modernize uh, the asset format. So maybe JSON or GLTF could be the more relevant today. Uh, also, it can be interesting to uh, support a script uh, system and not rely on a shared library. And eventually see how I can uh, parse uh, other games tables or try to import them. And uh, could it make sense to revive uh, this uh, old uh, pin edit? I'm not sure, but if there is an interest, let me know. And uh, yeah, I already uh, plan to join Debian as a developer. So if anyone wants to help me, is that uh, something I had on my plan for a long time now? So if you want to try it, uh, either you can try the Debian packages 
once they are updated or you can just grab the code from uh, git so i use github for managing my code but it's also mirrored on sourceforge and i use debian as a reference operating system you can build a snapshot, snapshot package from my script or my uh, um, personal repository or and if you're not running on debian you can also use docker to uh, build and run it on any os uh, so if you are even running on windows you can also try the game so feel free to share feedback on my github or upstream at this uh, sourceforge I probably need to update uh, the description and so on. And uh, if there is no feedback, you can uh, ping me on uh, Fediverse. I have a Mastodon account and you can see all the updates. Um, something that can be very helpful because I'm not uh, a graphic designer, but uh, many tables that should be, I think, uh, be updated. So this one is a hard table also. So it's working, it's kind of, it can be fun, but uh, it should be, uh, I think, uh, updated to make it uh, nicer and more convenient. So here are some links if you want to uh, get uh, more details and more uh, information about uh, related projects. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot uh, for everything. And if there is any question, I can handle them uh, online on uh, IRC. And uh, I think there is also a pad. And thank you very much for this. And uh, your feedback will be very valuable. So thanks a lot and uh, see you. Bye bye. Thanks a lot for sharing this wonderful setting, um, Philippe. Thanks. Now it is time for questions. So the first one, what is the model of that big screen you are using? So yeah, I started to answer on the pad, but um, this screen is actually, um, it's look like a TV, but it's a digital signage screen. It's not um, the same uh, quality of a TV set, uh, but it's quite similar. It has only um, a couple of inputs like HDMI and so on. Uh, this one is quite old. It's a Philips one. I think on the slide I, I put a reference, and if you go to it, there is a, a link to the reference of the model. Uh, I think, yeah, it's from the year 2007, so it's quite old, and uh, that's something I, I got from free because I, I found someone who wanted to get rid of it, and uh, instead of uh, putting it into the trash, I rescued it. And uh, first, I plan to uh, watch movies on this, but it's a bit noisy and there's not um, some weird pixel at the bottom of the screen. So I was a bit annoyed and then I had this idea of the pinball and it works per perfectly fine. And this one is super bright if you add a look because it's using a plasma technology. That's something that been used before the OLEDs and uh, LED. So it's super bright. It's super heavy. The, the, um, the set is about uh, 50, 40, 40 kilograms, so that's super heavy, but it fits on, on my uh, trestle. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure you can do this also using a, a cathodic ray tray hold TV, the big ones, you know, you just need to put it on a, on a, on something to have it uh, at the right uh, level. So that's something important because first, uh, I, I, it was just on a trestle and it was uh, only maybe 70 or 80 centimeters and I, it was not very convenient i have to uh, uh, move my uh, my arms uh, down so it was not easy so and then i found some uh, way to elevate it to uh, 80 centimeters and that's more easier so yeah that's all i can share about my tvs um Okay, the next question. Is there any news you would like to share since your talk was recorded? Yeah, I know who asks the question. Yeah, yes, yesterday uh, when I was recorded this presentation, very late, I should have done this before. But uh, when I checked my mail to send my video back to Debian DebComp team, I also get a notification that the new herd table has been merged into Debian. So it's now in uh, unstable and it has been pretty quick because this table this table has been fixed uh, maybe one week 
ago, so it was submitted by uh, yeah the, my uh, uploader. So I want to thank him. And uh, it only take, took a week to get it uh, accepted. While the first one, which was a GNU table, for some reason it took like uh, six months or maybe a bit more. So yeah, FTP master sometimes can be uh, can act in a mysterious way. I think uh, there is nothing more to not no no news to share. As I said in the video. Uh, I plan to probably join the Debian gaming team to release a, a new version of uh, Emilia Pinball that will be an anniversary release because it has been first released 20 years ago for, for Christmas. At last Christmas, I packaged a new table for the community. So now I showed over a new package uh, update. Okay. Thanks a lot for your talk, Philippe. Oh, you're welcome. I see one last question about uh, if it's possible to have ramps. Uh, actually, the tables I shown have uh, ramps, so that's something that should be investigated later because I know that uh, there is an editor made in Qt. I didn't show in this presentation because uh, I, I'm not sure it has uh, any future because I wanted to create uh, tables using a, a 3D editor and then uh, try to convert this to Emilia Pinball but it's not something easy to be done. So I believe that most of the community are using the pin edit. Uh, maybe this can be packaged in Debian also. It's a Qt4 application, so it should be properly ported to new Qt framework. And with this, yeah, you can design anything, but uh, it's not as easy as using a, a 3D modeling tool there. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So I keep in touch with the Debian team, and uh, if there is any question, yeah, you can reach me on IRC. My nickname is Arzider. And uh, goodbye, and thanks a lot for having me in this uh, DevConf. This is the first time for me, and I really want to thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Philippe. Bye.